Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound, and today we got a viewer request. Uh, this individual had found a coin that looked like it was two different denominations of coin pressed together, and he wants to know if he has a legitimate coin. Well, um, after taking a look at your coin, I'd say there's a lot of things that cast doubt in the genuine department of this particular error. And um, as you can guys see on the screen, all right, we have an example of one of these coins. Um, it's, it's a cent, it's a penny, and it's a dime, okay? What kind of error is this? Well, it's called a double denomination error. Uh, very interesting. And um, this is the type of error that I would say is in the top like 10% of most valuable, most coveted errors that you could uh, that you could find and uh, in this video we're going to talk about um, the double denomination error what it's about how do you know if you have one and how can you tell if maybe perhaps you have one that's a fake all right um, these have been faked quite a few times uh, for those of you that do massive amounts of coin roll hunting uh, whether it's pennies all the way up to uh, dollar coins for that matter uh, you might have come across something that looks quite familiar to this. Um, so, in hindsight, how does it all work? How does two different denominations mash together to make one coin? All right, that, that's going to be an interesting question through all this. And I'm going to use this graphic as a way of kind of describing it the best way that I can. So the... The subject coin we're talking about is what they call an 11 cent de double denomination coin. Okay, essentially you have a Lincoln cent. Uh, it's not so much the penny itself, but it's the dies used to produce the Lincoln penny. All right, those particular dies struck a an already produced 2001 Philadelphia Roosevelt dime. So you mash them both together and then you have the coin that is all the way on the right. Now, um, how does this error come to be, all right, at the mint? Um, you know, so some would say it's pretty far-fetched to, to find an already struck coin in a hopper of blanks. Okay, that might be the case. But if you think about the day-to-day -day operations of this, of a mint facility, anything could happen, okay? A coin can be struck, uh, you know, it, it might jump out of the, uh, the striking chamber, kind of funny, it might get stuck somewhere on the minting press, and then that's it, all over but the shouting. And all it takes is, you know, um, maybe the coin to uh, um, kind of come free from wherever it's being stuck at, drops into the striking chamber, and, and then there you go. You have an incredible error. Now, some of you are going to say, well, that's kind of hard to believe. Uh, but do you ever imagine all the things that do go wrong at the U.S. Mint? in terms of just the processes. Uh, I mean, for crying out loud, we've seen um, uh, <laughs> coins get struck on actual ordinary house nails, okay? Stuff that carpenters use to uh, put things together, all right? Uh, so if, if you think that you've seen everything, you probably haven't. Um, but this particular error actually happens more often than you guys think. All right, another scenario, let's say uh, an already struck dime, okay, you, you figure these things are getting produced at a rapid succession. So maybe a coin comes out and, you know, falls onto the ground somewhere under the machine. And then after a while, you know, the mint employees will go and, you know, do maintenance. They'll sweep up floors. They'll find a dime. Not really thinking about it, they'll throw it in a hopper of other blank planchets, okay? Not knowing that if it's Lincoln cent blanks or nickels or whatever the case may be. You just never know uh, throughout the day-to-day -day operations of the U.S. Mint. So what I did was I, I chose six double denomination coins uh, from probably rare to the mo most rare. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, kind of like the least <laughs> least rare coin, you know, or common. It, it, there's nothing common about these they do come up in pocket change uh, ever so infrequently. It's more of like a lottery shot odds, but at least you got to know what it looks like. Um, you're more inclined to find some of the what they call garage jobs, uh, you know, the, uh, um, the the lame attempts 
at putting one of these together, and we're going to see an image of that all the way at the end of the video, um, just so you guys know the difference. Uh, I would figure through these six images I'm going to show you, uh, actually 12, because uh, there's two images for each type of coin, that you'll know exactly the difference between one and the other. All right, so sorry to keep it so, uh, you know, stretched out there, but we're going to go ahead and start out with the, um, uh, the most frequently seen um, double denomination, and that's going to be the 11 cent D double D. I'll just call it double D. Uh, I know it sounds raunchy, but anyways, it's the double denomination 11 cent coin, and what it is is it is a Lincoln cent struck on an already produced 2001 Roosevelt dime. All right, so the one thing you're going to keep in mind with these double denomination errors is that you're going to see quite a few of the design elements of both coins. All right, um, the host coin obviously is a copper nickel clad composition coin, the uh, Roosevelt dime. So that's why when you look at this coin, you, you're probably figuring to yourself right off the bat, you know, if it wasn't genuine, it would probably be copper, all right, or a copper coated zinc coin because it, you see more of the Lincoln as being the dominant design trait on these coins, uh, which might come out, you know, to be true sometimes. Uh, but in this particular case, you know, if you were to take a close look at the coin, again, these are coins that you could stare at like a piece of art just to kind of like immerse yourself into what is actually going on. But you can see the other date, the 2001 of the Roosevelt dime right here, it's going to be raised. Okay, so all of the devices are going to be raised uh, from one to the other. You can see the Phil Philadelphia Mint mark right here. That is also raised. Um, you can see the profile of Roosevelt right here. And, of course, you can see Abraham Lincoln. And then you can see uh, the motto, In God We Trust. You can see Liberty. And then on the reverse, same thing holds true. You see the olive sprigs. You see some of the lettering, one... one uh, uh, one dime on the reverse, E Pluribus Unum, you can see part of that. But you can see even a little bit of the torch that's passing right through the Lincoln Memorial. All right, so everything is going to be raised, If okay? And the design devices of the host coin will be raised but flattened, if that makes sense. Um, and generally, that's what you're going to look for. If there's anything that's going to be mirrored or backwards and in -cuse, which means it's pressed into the coin um like the date okay more than likely you have a uh, a fake of this type of coin uh and people do come across even the double struck same denomination coins in much the same fashion okay i come across them probably one out of three or four lincoln cent boxes and you just have to accept it for what it is okay it was a lame attempt to make a genuine error all right, so this is this one here, and there is the coin slab. Uh, this one right here is sold on Heritage Auctions April 7th of 2006 for $3,450. What I can tell you, oh, and of course, it's a mid state 63 through NGC. What I can tell you about this coin, um, oh, by the way, it's a 2000 Roosevelt dime. So you have two different dates of coin on there, which makes sense. You know, maybe this Roosevelt dime was hidden underneath a machine and it took a year before it was all cleaned up and all that stuff before someone found it. Um, but what I could tell you, the 11 cent double denomination is one of the most frequently seen on the secondary market and these have come down in price a little bit. Um, you can typically get something that looks exactly like this for around a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars. So that gives you an idea of how much more common they are today than they were 14 years ago when this coin sold for nearly $3,500. All right, so the next double denomination coin, and I'm going to let you guys kind of take a guess of what's going on here. Uh, so I'll give you a moment. Okay, so for this particular coin, we have a um, 1968S. This is a San Francisco produced coin. Um, 1968S Jefferson Nickel that was struck on a 1968S Lincoln cent, all right, and that's probably why the coin is copper in color. All right, this is this one's really neat because this is a double denomination, but it's a flip over style because you have the design devices of a reverse of the Lincoln cent 
that is made it up with the Jefferson Nickel portrait, okay? So this is a really stimulating, very awesome example of a double denomination coin. Some would call this a six cent coin. But go ahead and take your time, take a look at the devices. You'll see that everything is raised. The, um, the host coin devices are raised and flattened. Um, you know, that's because of the strike. And then you're going to have the mottos and the dates of both coins kind of mashed together. All right. So this one right here is a NGC Mint State 67 full red. Um, as you can see there, it's a really pretty coin, even in the uh, slab holder. This one sold August 13th of 2010 for $3,737.50. Um, this is probably one of those coins that haven't come down much in value because there's just not a lot of them out there. All right, so that's that one. All right, so the next one that we have here, uh, another double denomination, obviously. But this thing is nutso. Um, if you took a wild stab of what we have here, we have a 1991 P Philadelphia 5 cent Jefferson nickel struck on a 1990 Philadelphia Roosevelt dime. So this is a 15 cent double denomination coin. Again, take a close look. You have some pretty interesting stuff going on here. Because the um, uh, the coin is a nickel, okay, you can see the Jefferson profile right here, the top of his head, uh, the bust area, you know, um, actually this is a dime size. So that's why Jefferson's head goes right up to the uh, edge of the coin and just kind of drops off. Um, on the reverse, you can see the um, the bottom of, uh, or actually that's the top, all right? This is where the dome would be of Monticello. And then the uh, uh, the steps would be like right here. But there, this is a really neat coin with a lot going on. You can see kind of like the cross reference of both the nickel and the dime all pushed together on this one. And again, the same thing is holds true. Everything is raised, okay? And that's what you're gonna find on these genuine examples is all of the devices are gonna be raised. The, um, the host coin images are gonna be raised and flattened, okay? While the uh, primary image will be um, in full relief, all right, for the most part. So that's that one there. So this one is a coin that graded out uh, NGC Mint State 64, um, this particular coin sold April 7th of 2006 on Heritage Auctions for 5000 oh, take that back, $4,600. All right, this is only the third coin on the list, guys. $4,600, and this one sold August 13th of 2010, much like the coin before it. Uh, there was a little collection, the New England collection of this type of double denomination error that sold um, back in 2010. All right. So here's a one that sold for $5,865. This one is interesting because what we have here is a 1999 Philadelphia, uh, Lincoln that was struck on, get this, a 1980D Roosevelt dime. Okay. So the first thing that I, I'm going to just go ahead and address right off the bat is how does a Denver minted coin end up at the Philadelphia Mint facility to produce this coin. Okay, I would speculate that this was probably what they call a shenanigans job. Uh, a Mint employee, you know, made this one on purpose just to kind of like see what it would look like. Uh, I doubt this one was made in error unless someone accidentally pulled out a 1980D dime out of their pocket and dropped it and it, it fell somewhere. And then it was found later, much later on and, um, put into a batch of uh, blank Lincoln Penny Planchets. So this one right here is an NGC Mint State 66 example, uh, pretty nice. Um, when you have coins that are double denominations and you have such a huge discrepancy in the date from one coin to the other, um, these are gonna be very rare and very, very valuable. Uh, generally, you're gonna see double denominations happen on either the same date of coin uh, from one to the other or within a year. All right, so we've already seen a 1991 uh, uh, Jefferson nickel struck on a 1990 dime uh, preceding this coin. So that's more along the lines of what you're going to find for this type of error. All right, so $5,865.
Um, April 7th of 2006. So this is, this is a very old listing. Uh, but do not mistake this coin for the very first coin that we looked at because of the 19-year difference from one type of coin to the other. That makes this one exponentially more valuable and more rare. All right, so this one's really cool, all right? You don't come across coins like this ever, all right? So uh, this is a coin that probably has popped up maybe two or three times in the last 20 years. Uh, this is a very rare double denomination error. This particular one is a 1999 Philadelphia Susan B. Anthony that was struck on a Georgia statehood quarter. Get that. How crazy. Um, the Georgia statehood quarter is, what, 1999 as well, so they're both the same date. Um, this particular coin, uh, you're going to see um, pretty much just the size of the quarter, all right, because you can see some of the design details of a general Susan B. Anthony kind of cut off and shrunken down a little bit uh, because of the size of the host coin. But this one right here is a PCGS Mint State 64 Double denomination on a struck Georgia statehood quarter. Very cool. Very cool stuff here. Uh, this one sold January 7th of 2012 for $6,325. Uh, the price values just keep climbing on these puppies. That's how expensive and how coveted these are. All right, people are paying a lot of money for these double denoms. All right, and then finally, the last one is probably... Uh, the best work of art that I could possibly ever show you in an error. All right, it's like um, a Picasso uh, in money, <laughs> money terms. Uh, but what we have here is a 1980 Philadelphia uh, Kennedy half dollar design struck on a 1979 Philadelphia one dollar Susan B. Anthony coin. Um, you have quite possibly the best mix of both coins present uh, on this particular example and um, just the way it's oriented it, it's like perfect uh, you, you can't ask for anything more in, in a double denomination error so to be quite honest probably one or two of these have sold uh, in the last 20 years um, it's just really difficult considering that the Susan B. Anthony uh, uh, coin series was very short-lived. It went on from 79 to 81, and then again in 1999. So it's a very short, short-lived run. Um, but this particular coin right here is an NGC Mint State 65 example. Jeez, uh, get a load, load, get a look at of that coin in the holder. It's a, amazing. It's magical. Uh, but this coin right here sold January 6th of 2016. Actually, it's the most recent sale out of the six for $22,325. Um, yes. <laughs> I don't know if anybody will, will ever find another one of these. Uh, this might be kind of like a very unique one-shot type of coin. But you never know. There could possibly be another one out there out of the millions if not billions of other coins in existence. So we've seen six really impressive genuine examples. So beware of the fakes. How do you know if you have one? Here's what to look for when you're trying to identify probably not only double denominations, but double struck coins. Now, the coin that I found for you is the one on screen. This is one that sold on eBay within the last 30 days and some poor schlub paid $500 for a coin that he probably thought was a genuine specimen of a double-struck coin or a double denomination. But in this case, it's a double-struck um, coin. So right off the bat, okay, you can see the two different dates. What's the one thing that really is glaring in all this? Um, the date, the other one, is backwards. Okay, it's on a genuine double struck or double denomination, this will not be backwards. In addition, the 1964 host coin is legitimate. However, when you have the numbers of the secondary date incused, pressed into the coin, okay, that's another red flag. Same with Liberty. You can tell Liberty uh, is pressed into the coin, whereas the actual Liberty of the 1964 
host coin is correct. The secondary profile of Abraham Lincoln is backwards, and it is also in Qs. Okay, plus you have all of this damage right here on the rim that's all smashed up and flattened. Okay, just another hallmark of a fake attempt at one of these errors. So here's another image, okay, that best displays the in Qs nature of what is trying to go on here. You see all this damage right here. Because, you know, you, you take a couple of these coins, you put them together, you have to literally put them into a um, industrial vice, okay, and then just squeeze the crap out of both of those coins. That's how you're going to get enough pressure to make something like this happen. And then finally, the reverse of the coin, okay, usually would have doubling as well. This one is completely flat and worn, um, as you would expect from a garage job, plus you also have damage right here as well. Plus you have damage here on the rim, okay, and that's what happens when you press two points together. So that is a, uh, that is a huge no-no in the community. We, we don't attempt to uh, defraud anybody by making coins like this. This is, uh, it's cheap, it's lame, um, but best of all, if you have the arsenal at your disposal to identify the fakes, okay, you'll do just fine, all right? Um, not just with double denominations, but double struck coins as well. The, the double struck coins are a very big problem, okay? I come across them, I have a box full of the fake um, pressed coins, I've never found a genuine one to date, and that's in 25 years. So it gives you an idea of how tough and how rare the actual, not only double struck, but double denomination errors are in the marketplace. So anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you were able to uh, get some valuable information from this video. As always, like, share the video, and subscribe to my channel, Blue Ridge. Uh, and don't forget to hit that bell for instant notifications. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining in on this video. It was a huge pleasure. This is such a neat topic. And um, you guys enjoy the hunt. Uh, you know, Coinaholics, we're discovering together every day. Enjoy the hobby, and I will see you on the next video. Take care.